Long time no see everybody, welcome back to Light like Cookies, I hope you all have been well. For the viewers new to the channel, my name is Ili. Today I'm gonna be showing you, in my opinion, the easiest way to keep track of your game properties during gameplay in Uchronia Project Blender Game Engine. Of course we won't have to recreate the game or make the properties from scratch, but rather we will be using the product file from the previous tutorial. You can find the file in my GitHub repository, link down in the description, or you can make it yourself by following the previous tutorials step by step. So here we go now, these are the properties from our last tutorials, and these are the controls and interactions with the world, again from our last tutorial. So what I want to do is first I will start the key display, and then I will shift A to add a text object. What I want to do now is uh, re rename it to Gold Tracker and of course as you can tell it will be the tracker for the gold. Next I want to press N and pop up this menu and uh, I will select the camera to copy its X rotation. Why I'm doing this? I am doing this because I want to align the text object with the camera view. So I selected the gold tracker and again in the X here I will paste the rotation of the camera. Then I will adjust the text object and uh, one thing you want to know about text objects and uh, cameras is that if you put them if you put the text object too close to the camera its resolution will decrease so i'm gonna check this now and its resolution is fine so i'm gonna leave it as it is so next what i want to do is um, i will parent it to the camera object so I'll just drag and drop and uh, I'm doing this because I want it to rotate with the camera view and I want it to be like an overlay scene of the camera so I will I press tab to edit the text and I am entering a zero because I want the starting point of the gold property uh, to be zero and it is zero actually until I touch a coin so next what we want to do is we want to increase this value here in order to do this we have to uh, tell the, the game what type of data is this uh, and we're doing this this way we add a text game property and I'm gonna say that it's an integer which is a whole number so now what I want to do is add a property actuator fill in the text property and I want to add the value of 1 but when I want to add 1 every time a coin sends a message to the player so basically I will add one every time I touch a coin. In order to do this, I will find this property actuator here, which updates the property, the gold property of the player. I want this property here to be updated the same amount of times as this one. In the same way as this one. So that's it actually for this tracker, I think. So let's check this out. If I kill a zombie cube and I take a coin, I have one coin. Then, okay, so the game ended, which reminds me, let's actually increase the end game here. So what this sensor does is actually 
uh, we set a limit of coins uh, which when we reach uh, we win the game so it was two so far and from now on it will be ten you can put uh, whatever number you want here all right so the next thing I want to do is uh, select just the text object and uh, press shift D to duplicate and we have not only the same object but we have its logic bricks and its properties and its parents so it's here parented to the camera I will rename it to health tracker All right, um, another thing I want to change is uh, here, I will press tab to enter 100. This will be my, my maximum health points. So next I will again shift select the cube, the player, and uh, as you can see here, this is the health tracker and I'm gonna be looking for the health property of the player. Now I'll do the same thing as for the gold property. Here I will connect with a string to this controller responsible for the health property update and I will as you can see here I have a minus 5 because the health must increase when the player is damaged so I will equalize that here so I will enter a minus 5 also all right so as we can see when I press P to play I'm not sure if you can see the hundred there but let me actually move it to let's say here all right so i got one gold and a zombie touched me and it touched me again so it damaged me and when i get into all of the zombies they hit me all together and uh once my health ran down to zero I died so that's all for today thanks for watching of course I was kidding I'm actually here in the point that I finished the game and hold up hold up I will show you everything in just a second uh, now you can see that we have the game engine runtime actually and we can track everything but of course I won't spoil the game for you uh, I want you to check everything and that's why I will upload it in my github repository as well so if you're interested in the game you can download it absolutely for free and try it of course it's not it's not like a triple A game or something but yeah of course you can check it out and now let's let me show you what I actually added to the game here are the spoilers I'm gonna show you what I did and how I did it if you want to play the game first feel free to go and download it and play it before continuing with the video First, I replaced the ground plane with a circular one, I scaled it up and I gave it a nice color. I noticed that the zombies were spawning too far so I moved the spawner closer to the player and I came up with an idea that would make the game a bit harder. I added another empty and set it as a parent to the spawner empty. Then I made the parent object rotate which caused the enemy spawn in more than one place. Soon the map was flooded with zombies, so I was happy with the result. I 
After, I added a lava layer represented by another circle and colored it as well. I renamed the object of the lava and the material of the ground and made the material of the lava shadeless. We all know the lava hurts people so I implemented that with a collision sensor. I specified the lava material in the collision sensor and the property actuator just set the player's health to zero. Then I made a you-lose scene for the negative outcome of the game. I added a material and a color to the text object and honestly I thought it would be visible during gameplay but I was wrong. I also made the material shadeless so I wouldn't need any lighting. After I added a scene actuator and I made it switch to the Yulu scene. It took me a while to understand that by deleting the player object I cut the camera feed. In the short exploring I added a camera to the Yulu scene thinking this could have been the problem. But in the end, what I had to do is I just had to remove the edit object actuator and put the scene actuator in its place, wiring it to the same controller. I then replaced the game actuator with a scene one. I connected it to the end controller of the gold property sensor. I simply copied the Yulu scene and changed the text to you win. I also changed the color of the text to keep the difference between these scenes. Finally, I specified the you win scene in the scene actuator, and nothing was left except for one last test. Everything seemed fine, so I exported as a game engine runtime. In order to do this, I had to include the option from the user preferences and I was able to find it when I searched for the word game in the search bar. Now available to start the export, I wanted to set up a folder for the game. I created one and started the process. I checked the gameplay and for there were no visible issues, I couldn't be happier with the result. Because of that, finally I created a shortcut of the exe file and I placed it on my desktop.